Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, friends. Welcome to Mid-Morning Manna, 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, about a 10-minute broadcast. I'm glad that you've tuned in today. I hope you'll share this with others that might need some victory in their life over moments of weakness. That's what we're talking about this week. And uh, maybe you know someone who have lived a pretty good life. Maybe they're Christians, they're saved, they're on the way to heaven, but all of a sudden they just blew it. Something came up, some circumstance, some situation, and they did something out of character in a moment of weakness. And uh, you know, that goes, off, off, uh, goes on a lot more often than we hope to believe that it does. And I don't, want it, don't like it in my life. It's happened to me, it happened to others. I don't like it, I don't want it. And so the key is to find out how to stay close to God, how to keep him in your life and in the forefront and on your mind and on your heart. And we talked about all the people in the Old Testament and New Testament that had moments of weakness. And uh, boy, it's an, interest, uh, an interesting Bible study in and of itself. But then we on uh, Monday, and we talked about it being a universal problem, like sin is a universal problem. And we talked about how spiritual people even have moments of weakness. Uh, today, I want you to think with me about how moments of weakness come during relaxation and idleness. You know, my grandma used to say, the idle mind is the devil's workshop and idle hands his work will do. Boy, isn't that, a, isn't that an interesting thought? Isn't that an interesting uh, uh, quote? And uh, my grandma, wow, she was a wise lady and she was a saved lady and loved the Lord and had a big family and went through a lot of trials in her time. They were sharecroppers. Uh, when when she was a young woman married her married her husband John and and uh, Lucy and John boy what a what a fine couple they were I remember both of them very well and uh, praise the Lord they're in heaven now and I pray that uh, God will will uh, uh, help you as you face difficulties and difficult times don't have an idle mind don't have idle hands and uh, because moments of weakness often come during relaxation and idleness. We have time on our hands and we sit around, think about things, what, maybe turn the TV on, watch something we shouldn't watch and do something just trying to fill the time gap. And before you know it, we're drawn away and uh, those the things happen in our life. Listen to what the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter number 11. And I'll begin reading here in verse one. It says, and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab. Now, wait a minute. Joab wasn't the king. The kings were going forth to battle, but David decided he needed some time of relaxation. He needed some downtime. He needed some idle time. And by the way, we ought to all have built into our schedule a time of rest, relaxation, exercise, a good eating, all the things that help us to be healthy and help us keep a clear mind. And we also ought to have partners that are that we, where we have accountability, folks that are looking out for us and we're looking out for them and uh, all that kind of thing. But here's this David, you know, he's the king, he's the authority. He can, he can send someone here or there or have someone killed or do whatever he wants to do. And the Bible says he sent Joab. At the time when kings go forth to war, he sent somebody else and his servants with him. So not only did he send Joab, his right-hand military man, but he also sent his servants. And uh, now there's nobody in the house but him. And he said, and, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But listen to this. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And you know what happened in the rest of that story. The rest of the story is David was idle. Boy, he had his mind, he, had, he, he was... His mind was in neutral. He, he wasn't committed to anything. He wasn't working on anything. They were taking care of that. He knew they'd win the war. They'd win the battles. And so he's up on the rooftop looking over to see what his neighbor's doing. And of course, he had a taller building than she did. And all of a sudden, there's Bathsheba on the building next door taking a bath on the roof. Thought in privacy. But here's David, the king, and then lust and temptation began to overcome him. It was a moment of weakness. 
He should have been busy. He should have been out there with his men. He should have been leading the thing. He should have been doing, at least uh, from our perspective, you know, hindsight's better than foresight. From our perspective, we think we know what he should have done differently. So let me just ask you to think about this. What is it you could plan to do different than what David did rather than just having idleness and, uh, and being lazy? You know, the Bible says that six days should work and one day rest. And we're living in a time now where everybody wants to be off every day. We want shorter hours. We want more free time, more leisure time, more recreation time, more time uh, to, to go to concerts or, or to go out to the bar or do well, you know, all kinds of things that would leave us wide open in moments of weakness to doing something that we'd regret the rest of our life. Don't get in that situation. Don't, just don't do it. Ask God to give you the courage, the strength, the wisdom, and the might to follow him, keep him foremost in your, in your, uh, in your being, in your eyes, in your thought life, and just love him. Remember now, idle minds, the devil's workshop. Idle hands, his work will do. That's grandma talking. Let God speak to your heart and be what he wants you to be. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the love of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for how you have watched over us. Lord, help us to keep our minds and our hearts busy. Lord, help us to spend time in prayer and in the word of God and doing constructive things with our time and with our energy. And certainly we can, Lord, we know that we can schedule some time to come apart and rest a while, uh, like the Lord uh, told his uh, followers. But Lord, we, we also need to be busy serving you and always have our guard up. Never let that let down the guard because we know the devil is like a roaring lion, lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. God, help us to not be devourable. Lord, help us to love you, to serve you. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>